All right, welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at AWS reInvent. This is reInvent number 13, and if I'm at a tech show, uh, there must be an Orp Balls, and there must be worldwide technology at present. So uh, I'm here with uh, Neil Anderson. Uh, Neil, what do you do for worldwide technology? I'm the VP of our global solutions and architecture team, focusing on networking, cloud, data center, and AI solutions. And Brian Norpal is SVP of architectures. Yeah, solutions architecture, yeah. and uh, look after our digital, cloud infrastructure, and AI, as well as uh, cybersecurity portfolios. And you are uh, worldwide technology, for people that don't know, is one of the largest systems integrators in the world. I think every time I talk to WWT, you've grown a billion dollars. Uh, first, just talk a little bit about the relationship you have with uh, Amazon and AWS. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been uh, partners for years now, as I think probably most people in this in this show floor have been. I think what we're really proud of is the fact that we've really focused on strategic engagement at uh, across their portfolio, as well as really thinking about, most importantly, how our clients are going to benefit from not only what we do with the rest of the ecosystem, but how they're going to take advantage of the services that AWS unlocks to help accelerate their growth. All right, well, Matt Garman's keynote, the new CEO, this was his first keynote as CEO of AWS that just wrapped up. Uh, either of you have any thoughts from uh, anything stick out in your mind as to uh, what was announced? I'd say j just first impression on my part. Excellent job by his on his part. He, he did an excellent job on his keynote. Uh, was I mean, really, Adam and Andy are tough. Uh, acts I know to it's really yeah. tough to follow, and I yeah. thought he did. Uh, he filled the shoes very well. Uh, really, just overwhelmed by the amount of emphasis on AI. I think the, it was very clear to me. Obviously, the industry is is so uh, adamantly focused on on AI. AWS has definitely taken a leadership role here as far as the, the, the work that they're doing with the ecosystem as well as the innovation that they've just fostered internally, uh, both on the product and on the service and solution side. Neil? Yeah, I was struck by three you know, big areas of announcements. One was faster performance, faster processor, faster environments. A um, lot of announcements there around that. The second one was around uh, model performance being able to tune models to be much more uh, performant and much more accurate. Uh, you know, they talked about the, you know, being able to uh, have accuracy built in uh, and, and, and using mathematical formulas to, to basically check the results of an, of an output. It's, it's, it's pretty innovative. And then the third big area was the announcement of the Nova model suite. Yes, I thought that, that was significant. Absolutely incredible um, that, you know, uh, AWS says that they're performant on, you know, pretty much with the benchmarks of the industry on those models, including multimodal, image generation, video generation. That was a huge announcement. Yeah, I thought one of the more interesting parts of Nova, too, was the, it's not released yet, but they're upcoming any mode to any mode uh, translation mechanism, right? So uh, that's going to create a whole bunch of new use cases. Uh, I think also with, with AI and AWS, um, they, they say this all the time, but people don't really realize that there are more NVIDIA GPUs used in the AWS cloud than anywhere else. They announced uh, the P6, uh, which is... Uh, Blackwell-based. Uh, bla yeah, Blackwell, which, yep. which, I mean, given the lack of Blackwell availability, this is probably the best track for most customers, and the cost, too. <laughs> right, the, uh, you know, the, the, the best track that customers have to be, in access, to be able to use Blackwell, correct? Absolutely, yeah. and, and magnitude's more performant yeah. over the previous generation of the NVIDIA chipset. So it's, it's great to see them partnering with NVIDIA both on their, that chipset environment as well as on, on their own with the Tranium chipset environment. Yeah. Now, it's interesting, I was talking with another analyst about this, while this show and every show you go to is a lot of AI, 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 um, some of the customers we talk to, uh, it's just a lot of, we're kicking the tires, we're trying it out, where are we with AI? Is, you know, because yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if you if you look at a lot of the the vision and things you could do, it's hard to find customers that are doing those. Yeah, I think you know as we as we think especially about the enterprise clients that we work with, I think there's you know there's those that are fast movers that have figured you know things out relatively quickly at least on a couple of initial use cases. By and large, though, we've seen an absolute ton of pilots and proof of concepts, and many of those stall out. They they, they get to a point where they've run in a some bump in the road, and that could be organizational, it could be adoption, it could be leadership and sponsorship. In many cases, it's tech, it's data, it's you know readiness, it's governance, it's risk. So there's factors that our clients are dealing with that, frankly, have never come together in this way. Right? This is a new industry paradigm where you're seeing teams having to work together across the entire enterprise in a new and differentiated way to prepare for an AI workplace. And those that have figured it out are moving quickly. What I, what I anticipate, though, is We've seen enough 
progress where clients are really starting to see the benefits and see what the potential outcomes could be, I think the next 12 to 15 or 18 months are gonna see acceleration. They're gonna get past this proof of concept and pilot stall and into real production use cases that are driving significant value to the business. And the most exciting part about that is that means that they've overcome some of those roadblocks of compliance or risk or tech yeah. or organizational challenge. And so the next use case and the next use, use case past that just accelerate. And so the adoption curve, I think, is about to go up dramatically over the next uh, couple of years. Now, one of the questions I always get is around the ROI of AI. And my take on that has been, it, it's sort of an, uh, it, it, it's a temporary question we won't ask in a few years. I've used the analogy, you know, when I was in corporate IT, the internet was relatively new. People asked about the ROI of the internet. Well, now the internet's just kind of baked into everything you do, so we don't think about the ROI because you can't not have a presence. And I thought one of the interesting things from Matt's keynote was he described inferencing as the fourth building block along with compute storage and database with the vision that inferencing and AI would eventually be built into all the apps that you use, right? And so if that's the case, then do you agree with that, that the ROI in some way doesn't matter because it's just a standard way of doing business? Yeah, and I think you mentioned it, Zaya. So, the, the, you know, when, when the internet was created, we all remember that. We're old enough to remember that, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> but um, people ask that same question. What's the ROI of this going to be? What's going to be the killer app of the internet? Today, looking back on it, it almost didn't matter. Right. Yeah, it is the killer app. Everything yeah, right. about how yeah. we do business, how we run our personal lives, right? Just hugely transformation on. I believe that our AI is going to do the same thing. Our asking about the ROI is almost the wrong question. Yeah. Is what I tell our customers. It's how do you transform your business? But yeah, I mean, as far as inferencing is a building block, I think that's a tremendously exciting. It got me thinking about uh, you know, today you build applications and you need an environment, a virtualized environment of network, storage, compute in that environment. Inferencing is just another service that you can add to any app. And I think Amazon is making it that easy that you can just incorporate that new building block into any app that you're developing. Yeah, and I know, um, you know, part of the challenge of AI is obviously the complexity. And um, uh, WWD has your AI proving ground uh, to help customers through that. And so talk a little bit about that. And what are the kinds of things customers are doing in, your, in the AI proving ground? Yeah, I think just in terms of the, the proving ground itself is a really important resource for clients, you know, especially in the, the realm that we work with in the enterprise and the government space and the, the service provider segment that we support. It is going to be a combination of, of cloud, AWS services, as well as on-prem or, or co-location or kind of the hybrid model. And so giving our clients a place to go evaluate the right way to work, uh, orchestrate and architect their platforms for the future is exactly what the Proving Ground is delivering on. And so that being able to answer questions quickly, provide guidance and, uh, and some you know, some advisorship is, is the outcome of the AI Proving Ground. And that's really what we're striving for is to have a point of view, right? Based on fact, based on testing, based on research that we've conducted, specifically related to the, the, the types of work that we're doing. I know Neil's got a point of view on what clients are asking us to do, the types of work and testing that we're conducting within the ATC. Yeah, and it's, it's everything from model comparison to, I wanna, I wanna test out InfiniBan versus Ethernet yeah. and see what the performance is. Deep fake detection research going on there. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. we have, you know, alert, very large customers that are worried about that issue and trying to figure out like which one of these software packages actually work and which do not. Uh, which storage options should I use? Uh, comparing different GPUs is another thing that clients are looking at. So, that, and that's really what it's built to solve is everything from I want to compare some technologies to I'm ready to prototype something. Yeah, in fact, I thought one of the more interesting reports was the InfiniBand versus Ethernet. I just recently ran a survey myself, and the majority of the audience believe they want Ethernet, but they believe InfiniBand performs better. Your study showed it's nominal, the Maybe. difference. Yeah, and so all things been equal, people want Ethernet, but they were deferring to InfiniBand because of uh, just a lack of understanding, I suppose. That was good to see. So yeah, that's been a it, yeah. that's been a popular paper. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah sure. I bet. Yeah, and even yeah. even Nvidia loved that paper, yeah. by the way, because they're they 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 see the future coming. Yeah, well, they just want more AI, right? So yeah. All right. Well, anything else you guys want to add? Uh, no, it's uh, you know I think just fantastic announcements this morning yeah. at the keynote. Uh, really blown away by the speed with their which with AWS is now moving in AI. Um, and and uh, Brian, any. Yeah, I mean, beyond the, the, the keynote this morning, just I spent uh, a, a little bit of time walking the show floor here this morning. 
it is overwhelming to see how big this ecosystem has gotten that really surrounds what AWS has built the market. Well, it's, a, it's literally everybody. It's yeah. everybody. It's every player in the game, yeah. big and small. And second to that, just an observation on the number of people here. Yeah. I mean, the, the number of registered users and then the people that are just surrounding the conference here is staggering. It's, it's unlike any other event that you go to in the IT space. And I, I, I think you can just feel the energy around what AI is producing. Uh, if, with that as a sidecar, a cybersecurity right along it. And uh, what's really, I think, fascinating is networking is cool again, right? Infrastructure yeah. is cool. All of these things are required in order for our clients to, to achieve their goals. And it's, it's really... Uh, Impressive to see what AWS has done in pulling all of this together. And I'm excited about the role that we play as an integrator making it all come to life. Yeah, the role of infrastructure is interesting because a few years ago, nobody wanted to talk about it. Now it is cool again because you cool need again. it. And so all it took was Jensen Huang and a $4 trillion market cap to come that's out right. and say infrastructure is cool. Right. So that's good to see. And all right, so uh, summing it up, AW, or AI is real, it's coming. It's gonna. Ha I think it's going to come faster than people expect. AWS is a great place to do it, but... If you want some help, talk to the folks at WWT for the AI Proving Room. You got it. Sums it up. That's it. All right. So on behalf of Neil Anderson and Brian Orpals, I'm Zias Caravella from ZK Research saying thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you.